Hi, I'm Sergey Shelkov, a sales executive here at EPUM DSP. And right now, I'll show you how to use a white label demand side platform. A DSP is a key tool that advertisers use to buy traffic programmatically. It can also serve as a bedrock of your own ad network. You'll need to know what features are inside and how they work before you start. Let's kick off from a dashboard overview. This, as you can see, is our platform. And the dashboard, well, think of it as a fast analytics tab that shows you the metrics that you would want to see at first glance. You can see the impressions, clicks, conversions, ECPM, ECPC, and spend over here, broken down by any period of time you desire, and choose which metrics you would want to display on the graph over here. We do, of course, have a full analytics tab available, but I'm gonna stop on that in a minute. What you would have to do probably first is add several campaigns to run. We are going to the campaigns tab and over here you can see all the campaigns that have already been created in your account. You can search for any campaign by name, you can filter out them by statuses, you can hide the ended campaigns and sort them by name, creation date, when they were updated and the total budget that the campaigns have. In order to add a new campaign, you just have to click here set a name for the campaign, let's call it test, as you can see this field is mandatory, and choose the basic settings of the campaigns that you want to run. You can run campaigns based on CPM or on CPC, which is not available in all of the platforms, in all of the DSP platforms. Let's go with the CPM and then we would have to put in a default bid price and a max bid price. The reason why we have two fields over here is because due to our optimization algorithms, your bid price could theoretically be increased in order to let you buy relevant traffic, higher performing, better performing traffic. Let's go with the default bid price of $1 and set a max bid price of 10. Flight dates decide when the campaign should start and when the campaign should end by default. It's infinite, of course. Use limits, lifetime limits for the campaign to adjust how many max impressions you want this campaign to have, what is the max spend, and what are what is the maximum amount of clicks you want this campaign to have. Of course, you will see the remaining status over here, and you can erase the limits. Daily limits are also available. It's really straightforward, the same as lifetime, but only on a daily basis, of course. Frequency capping allows you to select the maximum amount of times that this campaign would be shown to a unique user per any 24 hour period. You can also cap the user per 30 day period as well. I'm going, going to skip the filters, private marketplace, all the optimization settings for now because I want this to be a basic demo. Bidding strategy means that if you choose normal, it means that the campaign will spend its impressions um, that you've put into the limits over this period of time as fast as possible. Uh, whereas balanced means that you need to have a daily maximum spend or max impressions in order for the campaign to split it out evenly over the course of time. Targeting options have some things that I would prefer to keep up until the advanced portion of uh, the demo overview of our platform, but there are also some basic stuff like language that you can include or exclude or allow or block, uh, which is essentially the locale. You can also choose the category and uh, of course you will find all IAB supported categories here as well. Please note they should be passed along by an SSP for you to be able to target them. There's also an option to target an operating system of your choice and their versions as well, of course. You can target browsers, specific user agent if you want to, and you can decide which SSPs you want to buy traffic from for this campaign. Reason being, whenever you create a new campaign, all of the SSPs start sending traffic this way automatically. You can also decide in which country, region, and city of your choice you want to run this campaign and decide when this campaign should start. 
and when it should end in regards to days and hours. After you've saved this campaign, it's, uh, it asks you to add a creative of your choice. And EPOM supports various types of creatives. It could be banner for mobile or for desk desktop. You can buy pop-ups, video, native, and push as well. Let's go with banner. Over here, you can decide what would be the price for this banner that you're bidding with and frequency cap for the banner inside of the campaign. Please note that these settings override the settings you've set up on the campaign level. Next option would be for you to create an, uh, an ad itself. And there are three ways to do this. First is enabling a third party ad tag, which would require you to select a certain banner size or set it up yourself and then put in the ad markup that is usually given to you by any third party ad network or a third party provider. You can also use any of the macros that we support and there's quite a lot of them if you want to pass any data to the advertiser. You can also upload the creative yourself onto our servers by specifying the target URL that you want the user to be redirected to and of course setting up the creative itself. Finally, there's an option to utilize creative library that hosts all the creatives that you've uploaded previously to the platform. After you've done this and selected a size, um, you have various other options that you would fill in if you want to, like the creative attributes, sometimes the SSPs that you're buying from request this information to be passed, uh, as well as the creative category as well. And there are more targeting options on the creative level, which allows you to buy traffic from a specific device type, a specific traffic type, where the banner would be located, above the fold, below the fold, or in any other places, what would be the connection type, and the category that you desire to buy for this banner specifically. Attribution links info holds information, what you would have to do if you want to track clicks and conversions. Essentially, this is a pause back information that you would have to pass on to the advertiser for them to call EPOM's URL in order for our platform to track clicks and conversions. Set everything up, you would have to save the banner and exit. From now on, this campaign that you've set up would be buying traffic from the SSPs that send traffic its way onto the creative that you have set up. You can of course preview it, you can see all of the information about the campaign, about the creative over here, and you can work with the campaign or the creative uh, straight from this campaign window over here. Next thing I wanted to show you would be analytics. Inside the analytics, you have the option, just as in dashboard, to run various reports, uh, but there are quite a few more metrics and group buy options, if you will. So for group buy, you can see that we support quite a lot of various um, things that you can break down the results by, and you can run multiple at the same time. And of course, for all of those, you can also add a filter to decide, uh, you know, for example, which domains are interested in interesting to you uh, for the analytics, as well as see uh, all the impressions that are relevant over a certain period of time. Once you run a report, let's go Let's do it like this. You can see that um, this, this report has been generated and is broken down by creatives, by operating systems, and all of the results are in. And you can see that probably all of the metrics that you would ever need to analyze the campaign, to make some adjustments, to make some manual optimization perhaps, are all over here and are available for you uh, to analyze or to ex extract uh, back into your BI tool let's say over an API. Next thing I wanted to show you was media planning. And media planning is something that may be relevant uh, for you, not necessarily immediately, but maybe a little bit in the future. So the difference between analytics and media planning is that in analytics, you will only see data for the traffic that you bid upon. So the traffic that's of real interest to you. Whereas in media planning, 
you will see all of the requests that are coming in uh, in order for you to uh, make some adjustments or forecasts for the future. So let's maybe run a report for yeah, last seven days and group the results by countries. What we will get here is that uh, we had, for example, 12,000 uh, estimated impressions coming from Canada, which were not of interest to you, meaning that you did not bid on them, but they may be of interest to your future advertisers. So whenever they come in, uh, come to you and they ask whether you have any Canadian traffic, you can tell them safely that, yeah, I've got, I've got this, this much traffic, even though you're not buying it at the moment, uh, this could be really important to use uh, whenever you're looking to grow, looking to expand into other geos or into other verticals. This concludes the basic portion of a white label DSP demo. And today we've covered dashboard, had a quick look at campaigns and creatives, and we covered media planning as well. One last thing I'd like to tell you about is the benefit of using a DSP. With our white label DSP, you may cut up 10, 30% of your monthly expenses as a white label DSP doesn't charge you hidden bid markups. You can unite all of your traffic sources in one dashboard instead of bouncing between several self-serve DSP accounts. You can build your own ad network and give out self-serve accounts with custom permission settings to your advertisers. You can enjoy control over your ad campaigns and supply partnerships. And of course, you can customize your platform from head to toes. That's pretty much it for the basic portion. Stay tuned for advanced part two of the tutorial to learn about advanced features of a white label DSP.